The Cold War in the late 1950s was at its height. The Soviet Union had amassed a huge bomber fleet capable of reaching anywhere in Western Europe or the United States. Even more threatening to the West was the perceived Soviet superiority in long-range missiles capable of delivering a nuclear warhead within minutes of launch. The British and American strategic bomber fleets and their bases were now considered vulnerable to a Soviet first strike. The United States had developed its own missiles, but these were cumbersome and initially slow to launch and very vulnerable to attack. The British were anxious to maintain an independent nuclear deterrent, and their V-force led by the Vulcan was the pride of the RAF. The British planned to build a medium-range ballistic missile called Blue Streak, and had also developed a short-range, 50-mile air launch missile for its bomber fleet called Blue Steel. But Soviet air defense advances made Blue Steel almost obsolete before it could be deployed. Strategic thinkers believed a long-range air-launched ballistic missile would be well-suited for both the Americans and British. Skybolt was born. The British decided not to build Blue Streak and also dropped plans for an updated Blue Steel missile. It would rely almost exclusively on the American-built Skybolt. By late 1961, Skybolt was ready for testing. Built by Douglas Aircraft and officially designated the Douglas GAM-87, the Americans planned to deploy the missile on its B-52 bombers, while Britain would use its Vulcan B-2 bomber. Both aircraft would have to be modified to be able to carry the weapons. The B-52 was big enough to carry four missiles, while the Vulcan could carry two. It was an impressive system, as its statistics show. It was nearly 40 feet long and nearly a yard in diameter. Each missile weighed some 11,000 pounds and could fly at nearly 10,000 miles an hour with a range of 1,100 miles. It was propelled by two Aerojet General solid fuel rockets and carried a 1.2 megaton nuclear warhead, enough to destroy a city. Its internal guidance systems would also make it an accurate weapon, adding to its lethalness. The British government ordered more than 100 of the missiles for its Vulcan fleet, but the testing program ran into problems as it got underway in 1962. The first five powered flights of Skybolt were failures. The Americans were getting nervous about cost and efficiency. In the fast-moving world of nuclear weapon systems, Skybolt, for the Americans at least, suddenly seemed less appealing. The new presidency of John F. Kennedy saw the new American Defense Secretary, Robert McNamara, seeking efficiencies in military spending programs. McNamara had been president of Ford Motor Company and pride himself in bringing a businessman's approach to government. He and his Pentagon advisors, known as the Wiz Kids, took aim at Skybolt. Increasingly land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, were being protected in hardened silos. But the greatest threat to Skybolt came from the sea. The Polaris submarine-launched ballistic missile had been developed. The Polaris housed on a nuclear-powered sub could hide in the oceans for weeks, if not months. They were nearly invulnerable to attack. The Americans had lost interest in Skybolt. On 19 December 1962, just weeks after the Cuban Missile Crisis, President Kennedy and British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan announced the cancellation of the program. Ironically, Skybolt was successfully tested that very day. The British would be left without any viable strategic nuclear weapon systems while the Americans now had what would become known as the Triad, bombers, land-based long-range missiles, and submarine-based missiles. The British were offered the Skybolt program, 
but it simply was too expensive for the British government to take up. Ultimately, the British would purchase Polaris technology from the Americans and build her own small fleet of missile-carrying submarines. She would still have the ability to deliver tactical nuclear weapons using her V-bomber fleet and later tornadoes, but essentially the RAF ceased to be a strategic strike force. <laughs> 